Huddled together by the wet, seaweed-coated rocks, Laura and Tariq shivered with cold. They'd been drenched as they clambered off the boat in choppy waters and had been unable to warn themselves because they were still trussed and bound. Hearing that conversation chilled them even further because they now knew their potential fate. On their journey to the shore, one of the boatmen had explained to the two gangsters, Monk and Rumblefish, that their arrival had been specially timed to coincide with the tide being much further out than usual. Nothing more was said, but Laura's blood ran cold. There could only be one reason to visit Deadman's Cove on the night when the tide was at its lowest point in the year, and that was to gain access to the old smuggler's tunnel. Her uncle's warning resonated in her thoughts. He'd forbidden her to go near Deadman's Cove. Terrible things happened there. Approaching Deadman's Cove from the ocean had been even more heart-stopping than gazing down on it from the cliffs above as she had done previously. The sheer walls of black granite towered above the Atlantic like the battlements of some ancient fortress, and the waves charged up to the beach like wild white stallions with flying manes. The tunnel was exposed, a black gash in the rock. There was no way out of the cove except to scale a sheer cliff, face or swim the lethal currents of the Atlantic. Barring a miracle, there was no escape from whatever grim fate awaited them. As they entered the tunnel, the stench made them inhale sharply. Wet granite rotting seaweed and fish bones. Minutes later, a fresh wave roared into the tunnel, knocking the two hostages over, splashing down in a tangled heap. The torch went out and an inky blackness enveloped the tunnel. I'm out of here, announced Monk to Rumblefish, who was dripping and panting. Sensing disaster was about to strike, and with the only map and torch held tightly in their hands, the two men fled around a bend in the tunnel, leaving their hostages collapsed in a heap. Laura and Tariq stumbled in the dark, shivering violently in the cold. Every minute felt like a life sentence. Faced with the choice of three tunnels, Laura's muscles screamed with weariness. When Tariq suggested they try the middle passage, Laura just stumbled blindly after him. The next hundred metres felt like ten miles to Laura. Every step was agony. Breathe, Laura, just breathe, reassured Tariq, reaching for her hand. Eyes stinging from the salty water, Laura sucked in the air. It was sweet and clean, not stale and smelling of old fish bones. Her vision cleared. Tariq was smiling at her and pointing upwards. Exhausted, Laura tilted her head. They were at the bottom of a mine shaft, so ancient that grass grew in the cracks in the old bricks. Overhead was a circle of night sky, tinged with the pink of the coming dawn.